Hey, Broken Tea Society, back at Trinity Forest with Cameron McCormick, and we're talking about the big stick, the driver here, how to get a little more pop, a little more length uh, off the tee. Yeah, it's easy. It's easy. We have to follow the speed. And <laughs> follow so, the speed. Yeah, and so what determines how far that ball travels is really a, a couple of things. Well, three in particular. It's the speed it's traveling with, and we'll follow these backwards kind of in order. So we have an understanding of what to look for if we're practicing alone or we're practicing with some tech, with some feedback. It's what's the ball speed, what's the spin rate, and what's the launch angle. Those are the three factors that we're principally looking at um, to number one, investigate, and then number two, to get more pop to effect. Okay. So, one of those starting points is feedback on contact. So we can use our trusty foot spray. All right. We're gonna spray the face, and we're gonna hit a series of shots here. And I'm just gonna watch. And then we'll start to talk, talk through both specific to you, how we can give you more pop, and that'll dovetail quite nicely in a conversation about general speed. Okay? Great. So, All carry right. on. I've got my track man running. I'm gonna be <coughs> monitoring those three factors of ball speed, launch angle, and spin rate. Here we go. Nice strike. Thanks. Can we show the camera the evidence of success there? High center. High, High center would typically maximize ball speed, spin rate, and launch angle. That would be most ideal to strike it there over and over and over. Carry on. Hey, look at that. What's good for you in terms of a drive distance? Uh, 280-ish. 266 on that one. 144 right. miles an hour of ball speed. Spin rate just shy of 2,000, launch angle of 12.1. All right, well this time we're gonna let the horses out, all right? <laughs> it sounded like it was higher on the face, potentially more toad. Indeed, you're right. Hmm. Not now what we typically see there is a drop in ball speed, but we didn't because you said I'm gonna let the horses out, right? Yeah. And so you swung faster, in fact, you added five miles per hour of clubhead speed that time. So that's one of those effectors yep. of more pop, right? More physical effort. Can yes. I make the club head move faster? So understand that one. Your ball speed went to 151. Because of the toe contact, your spin rate dropped to 1400. That's not quite enough to keep that ball yeah. in the air. Yep. And as a result of that, your carry was probably about 10 yards shy of optimally where it would have been given that Clubhead yeah. speed, ball speed, and launch angle. Launch angle at 14, that's really nice. So, that drive did go your 284. Okay. But, whilst that might be good, that's not as far as it, as it could have as gone. As it could have gone. Yes, on center contact. Okay. One more. One more. Should I give this a, a, little, bit of, a little bit of oomph? Yeah, give it the same amount of oomph. All right. And now we get a spread. That's not a happy pattern. That is a, uh, That's a, pattern. a, a banquet of options. <laughs> exactly. That's a pattern that builds in variance, variance that we want to cancel out. Now we have a heel strike. Heel so we strike. got center, we got toe, and we got heel. What does heel do? Heel possibly could increase ball speed, but it's going to increase spin. It creates some twisting about the club face and causes it to launch lower. So we have 100 miles an hour, 146 drop in ball speed. In fact, spin rate at 2000 and a launch angle that drops down. Mm -hmm. So, specific to you, we wanna optimize our contact location or at least improve it. We wanna trim the fat sure. on the outliers there. Your outliers come as a function of losing your body positioning. Mm. Yeah. So what you do on the downswing is you begin to fall away from where that golf ball is sitting. Your chest moves further away than where it started. And that requires a couple of things to happen, some amount of arm extension to get the club further away from you. So the first thing that I would try and cancel out is that body movement. And we can do it with a stick on the ground or we could just do it with an awareness of pressure through your feet. Mm -hmm. Let's try the pressure through your feet, yes. which would require some assist from me starting out. <clears throat> and so this will be a, you can tee a ball up by all means, but this will be a practice swing before we actually uh, live rep this thing. <sighs> So I'm just gonna hold the butt end of the grip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're gonna make a practice swing right through this space. Yep. Butt end of the grip in the front of the cap. Make me a back swing and stop. Now very slowly make me a down swing. Very slowly, beautiful. Do you feel that constant pressure on the grip? Yes. That's you holding your body angles, holding pressure from shifting further away from it with your mass. It okay? felt different. And now create some amount of that sensation. Let's see the effect we get on contact. 
All right. <clears throat> Yeah, great job. Thanks. Great job. Now, contact location was? A little healy. It was, it was less healy than the prior one though, yep. wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. So when your body mass moves far away from it, you tend to tow it mm -hmm. as the primary error. Then the amount of extension you create either lands at center or you can cross over the other side and land it healed. And so if we are going to heal it, what I would then begin to do with you is I'd begin to, let's say, obstruct too far away, yeah. right? Because that's the accommodation you've been making. We can do it simply with a club on the outside or stand by because I know how much you love. I love that your, head cover. Your broken tee head cover. I know that you're going to try and avoid touching it. Now I put a couple of golf balls in there just to weigh it down in case the wind would be blowing it out of the way. Uh-oh. Right. There might not be any more of this, these available, Cameron. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a little worried. So now the objective is Woo! hold your balance, maybe make a practice backswing and downswing where you really feel like you're transitioning without falling back into your heels. Beautiful. Okay. And now you're gonna try and avoid touching the head cover Don't destroy in conjunction the, the head with that. Cover. Yeah, great job. Oh my goodness. There it is. Center, tight draw. That was money. So that's very specific to you. That doesn't apply to all watchers, or listeners, or viewers. Yeah. But yet, we're really just here for me. Cameron. In the same, <laughs> in the same context, we can apply those same rules. We can obstruct any contact by putting a head cover down. We can also do the same thing on the inside. Can I borrow your driver? Yeah. And I promise, please. I promise, I promise, promise, your head covers are safe with me. Oh, all right. I'm a professional. I do this for a living. <laughs> so what we would do is we just create a head cover channel. Again, the only reason I'm putting golf balls I like in here the is to weigh of them golf down. Balls. To weigh them down. Now I've got a channel that I can swing within. And this is gonna help me make sure that every time I bring that club head back to that tee, I'm landing it centered out. If you have an ability to video yourself, which almost everyone does, just watch for this mass distribution that's gonna cause the contact to shift along the face this way. There's also the vertical shift as well that's gonna sap you of distance. The vertical shift down is gonna spin that ball up too much. If that is you, after you've provided yourself some feedback, then practicing some height control can be super important. Height control means the height that I deliver the arc back to impact through some arm extension work, feeling like your arms are really extending back out is gonna bring that arc back close to the ground and it's gonna move your contact location up in the face. Clearly, I know what you're probably uh, thinking or asking, couldn't I just affect vertical contact location with T-height? Most definitely. T-height is one of those primary factors to uh, drive this, but sometimes it's more movement related than it is, um, than you have a, an accommodation or ability to adjust it with T-height. So that's contact location, come on in. Mm. As one of those factors that's gonna affect uh, an ability to maximize driver speed and get more pop on it. The other piece is what you mentioned, second swing out of the gates here, which was what? The effort, the mm -hmm. physical effort, right? And so we have this ability to tap into more, but it needs to be practiced, right? Um, there are aspects of body movement that contribute to more speed. One of them is in, is in range of motion in the backswing in terms of swing length. Swing length is governed by how much I rotate both my lower body and my upper body, and how much I swing my handle up into the air. I've got a longer range of motion that then I can accelerate through. So this would be that next step that I think the viewers could learn is that, is there, and we don't know because we're not seeing everyone out there, an ability to open up more range of motion in the hip, to feel like the handle is just slightly higher or further, longer in the backswing, to give rise to more club head speed. And it really, it's just like explore, experiment. That's the best advice that I can give you. So if you're willing to do that, we can be um, a live cadaver, so to speak. Oh, I'm willing. <laughs> All right, sweet. Here we go. What I wanna see from you now, <clears throat> what's your high club head speed? I think it was 100.5, maybe 101. Yeah, 101.2 before, before a golf ball comes in there. Yeah, okay. I just want you to demonstrate for me mm -hmm. address. So address the T right here. There we go. 
Beautiful. You have enough toe flare here to allow the hips to rotate okay. as well as they possibly could. I want you to feel like you're turning your belt buckle back to the back camera a lot and feel like your hands get really high at the top of the backswing. Okay. Lots of belt buckle, lots of hand height. Fantastic. Start all over again. Do that and swing on through. Excellent. Now we're going to put a ball in the way of that. And we're going to see if this for you can be immediately a factor that produces more clubhead speed. Right? Clubhead speed being one of those factors that would produce more ball speed. Okay. Feel free to rehearse it again. Nice big hip turn, nice hand height. Outstanding. Okay. Nice strike. Thanks. 101.3, one tenth of a mile per hour. Okay. Having said that, the ball speed went to 152.2 and your total distance went to 285. So that's the longest yet. All right. Did you feel like that was difficult? No. Okay. Let's try it again. I feel like I got more in the tank. Let's go. Cameron? Let's go. Nice. Outstanding. Striped. Absolutely I mean, I striped. That all 102 miles per hour, 154 miles an hour of ball speed on that one. Spin rate, remember I said that's important, 2,500, nice launch angle, 12. Total distance, 289. We're on track. We're getting We're there. on track. Yeah. So I think it's, as we summarize it, it's a tough concept because there are so many variables or factors that might impact club head speed to impact ball speed. But I'd like to cancel out or remove obstacles to that ball speed showing up first, and that's contact. So refine the contact yeah. horizontally, vertically. Then we can start to explore those things that might add a little bit more pop, and that's moving this thing faster by changing the way, modifying the way your body moves just slightly by opening up perhaps more range of motion through the hip and swinging the handle back slightly higher. Now, the asterisk here, or the disclaimer is, I would only try and do this with driver driver being the club, that we can gain the most off the tee without impacting our contact quality relative to the ground. Yes? It's off a tee, we're given some contact forgiveness, so we're not going to touch the ground. Whereas the irons and every other club in the bag that we strike off the ground, it's much more of a control-based game. So more pop out of the driver, those are two pathways that I would look for. Love it. Thank you. I mean, that was something for me, uh, you know, this this idea of that I can achieve simply with some head covers mm -hmm. that I can achieve those center strikes yeah because I've thought you know I, I I know that I need to get more closer to the middle and that's going to have such huge differences but that's what a simple way to do it yeah. thank you so much fantastic right, good job, good job. Yeah. all the best good stuff